I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. Hey guys, if you haven't noticed by our backdrop, I'm gonna give you a little tour. <laughs> We're back in Georgia, <laughs> but for a good reason. We're on the 450 and we are preparing her for a little open ocean travel. We're getting ready to head down the coast and bring the 450 to Fort Pierce. So today, Ty and I are working on all the little tidbits to make sure that she's in tip top shape to go on the outside. So let's see what Ty's doing. All right, babe, what you got in there? Well, it's oil change day. And we're about 10 hours shy of our 250 hour service and it's been just under a year. So obviously we haven't run the motors that much. We still need to do an oil change because we'll probably be over with all the motoring that we're gonna have to do because what are we gonna have? Like five to eight yeah. knots of wind. Um, and of course I'm checking all the ray cores. This one seems to be a little, little grody. Let me see, I'll show you. You can see this stuff here in the bottom. This line here is diesel biomung or something and uh, the other side is actually crystal clear we don't have any de uh, deposits or anything like that fairness though we have been running that engine a little bit more because uh, with it being really really cold when we were on that dock with no power um, we had to generate a little bit more juice to be able to run the heaters so i'll clear that out uh, turn the engines on today after we get the wells changed run everything uh, check our fuel levels just double check everything before we leave and um what are you yeah. doing later today uh, later today when it calms down and it's not blowing 15 knots i am going to go up the mast and check all of our rigging so we'll check all the cotter pins check the connections uh, just to make sure everything's secure there's no chafe or um anything out of the ordinary and it will get you to get all that done by what do you think three this afternoon i'm hoping and then maybe we can have a relaxing evening before we get up and make a 12 hour, 15 hour, 15, 15 hour well, passage. Depending. I mean, hopefully we'll, we'll yeah, see how 15. zoom zoom we go. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. What are you doing? Well, because of my healing burns. So burns, I just mentioned that I got burned pretty badly and I am healing from that. So I need to tell you what happened. We were about a day away from leaving Georgia and we were finishing the dinghy. It was very cold and we came back to the 450 so that we could be finished for the night, shower up, warm up. Um, and I made a hot cup of tea in our beautiful Yeti tumbler, which is meant to keep things nice and hot. And it did. The one thing that I, I neglected to do because, well, we were on a dock and I didn't think that it was important. Um, I didn't put a lid on top. So Stella was sitting here and I wanted my seat back. And so I kind of came around the side of the table and I scooched my way in and kind of nestled on top of her to make her move. And she was a little frustrated with me. She huffed, she got up, she turned and spun and with no lid on my cup, her butt came around and knocked the cup directly into my lap with my boiling hot cup of tea inside. So if you have a weak stomach and you don't particularly care for gruesome pictures, fast forward, Sydney will put a timestamp in there past the picture so that you can rejoin the video later. Um, but we're going to show you some pictures here of what it looked like the night that it happened. Um, I got the cup spilled. So I initially got the first burns across my stomach and then down onto my entire upper thigh area on more my left side, but a little bit on my right side. And then of course I was sitting and as I was kind of reeling in that hot second, literally about what had just happened and the pain that I was in, um, I was able to, to get up. But in the meantime, the water had gone then down kind of around my butt. So I got burns on my butt. Um, and as I stood up, the water then just continued to roll down my leg. And since I was sitting like this, the water all went this direction. 
So my left side was really more affected. I got burned on my upper calf and then it really pooled down around my foot area and my ankle. So that was probably where some of the worst burns were. Um, it was really, really scary and really, really uncomfortable. I can't even express. Um, first and second degree burns, I don't think that I really had anything that went beyond second degree. Um, and it was bad. Uh, it was the night before we left to go and leave with the 50 to head down the coast to go to Fort Pierce. So I was absolutely miserable for that entire trip. Um, just pain and discomfort. Walking was incredibly difficult. Sitting was incredibly difficult. Um, and then we got to the boat show after that and we had to walk the boat show and I was all bandaged up. I looked like I was wearing diapers. It felt, um, kind of embarrassing. So I, I really wasn't super comfortable, but the good news is, is that we are now almost five and a half weeks, I guess, past the injury date and I'm healing beautifully. Most of the first degree burns have completely disappeared and gone away. Um, I had a little bit of irritation from some of the bandaging and so I had to deal with keeping that kind of in check and healing as well as the burns. Um, but now I'm doing great and things are, are healing beautifully. So I'm still keeping the cream going to make sure that I get everything um, healing properly. But I think that what that means is now it's important to do a future video on first aid and safety. I know everybody does videos on their ditch bag, but I think that um, the first aid kit is probably not as talked about as it should be and some of the things that you might think would be important like sutures and things like that are absolutely important but also long-term care of injuries is something that should definitely be considered so look for that in the future in the meantime know that i am definitely on the mend and everything is good and we're excited to share the rest of our adventure with you so here we go i'm trying to stay number one out of the sun as much as possible but also just keeping them open because i'm getting some rashes from the bandaging so um i'm just trying to take it easy and do laundry dishes make sure everything is stowed properly because of course we've been sitting idle for a long time so just make sure that everything is buttoned up and put away so that we're all set to go and you make me a sandwich I'm not making you a sandwich you make your own sandwich <laughs> god make me a sandwich no get to work change the oil <laughs> And I think little Miss Stella is bored with all of it. Yeah, Stella, are you ready to go on passage? No, you could care less? Okay. So, so I'm getting ready to go up the mast so that we can uh, make sure that all the rigging is good and just no chafe, damage, anything like that. This is our last time we're gonna use our headsets. Um, I think I'll have Sid put a link in the video. We've had some people ask about these. Um, and actually Amazon, and they work really, really well. Um, so, 75 foot mass plus aerials. So we're gonna go up, it's nice and calm today. The wind died down to about, what's the wind speed? She's running away on me. Uh, true wind speed is two knots. That ought to do it. <laughs> so, uh, so, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use my phone, take some pictures for you guys, and yeah. And I'll go back to doing the other engine and then I think it's beer 30. All right, you good? Are you, are you a scared? No, I'm not a scared. I just have to go to the bathroom before I do this. So. Now she tells me she's got to go pee while I'm sitting in the chair. I'll get your sunglasses on my way back then. Thanks, babe. Okay, bye. All right, so I'm up here at the first spreader and I'm just checking all the diamonds. Make sure my cotter pins are good. There's no cracks where any of this comes in. Make sure all the fittings and all the hardware is nice and tight. Um, it's got a nice view. Wave cam. There she is. So on the way back down, I will check the uh, check the radar dome and all of that. Um, but for now, I'm going to go up to the next spreader, and right before that is the lazy jacks. So I'll check the pulleys and all the knots on the lazy jack system, and. Uh, Make sure I'm not getting any corrosion where the diamonds pass. I don't know if you can see that up there, right? Do, 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 do. Right there. Ah, got it right there. It's where those the lines cross. 
you can get some uh, pitting and corrosion where those um, where the stainless cross is. So I want to make sure that everything's good in there and none of those strands are compromised. And that's pretty much it. Just checking all of the threads coming out, looking at the rigging, see what kind of condition it's in. And, um, just check every connection point. Here we go, back up. All right guys, second shroud. And checking my AIS. That's what I meant, second diamond. She's correcting me, she's talking to me in my ear. So this is our AIS antenna, which is separate than our VHF antenna, which is all the way at the top. So we don't get cross interference. We've got uh, separate feeds to the back of the VHF. Um, it just gives us cleaner signal and we put big cable for both of them. So we'll get a, a longer reach with our, with our VHF. But um, the only other thing else that's up here that you're gonna see is gonna be some of these wire looms. I pre-wired the mast when we stood it in the yard and um, made sure that we had, excuse me, enough wire for spreader lights. Completely superfluous, it's not necessary, it's just really cool. Um, and I was gonna put them on the upper and lower uh, shrouds so that they would light up the entire mast when we were at anchor. I haven't got around to installing those yet, but the wire's there. All right, now the next thing I need to do is go up to the top of the shrouds, which are the the big wires that go from the uh, midship on the boat to the top of the mast that along with the uh, force uh, the um the force stay which is inside the jib that's um, rolled up is what holds the mast up so we're going to check all three of those connection points up top uh, we are a fractional rig which means that the wires don't go all the way to the top they stop just shy of the top um, so then from there i'll have to go up again to get to the top of the mast and uh, check our aerials and our wind vane and all of that so I'll catch you at the next stop. Now we're at the top of the shrouds with the uh, maintenance guy trying to figure out how to use that blower down there. Rum, rum, rum. I think he wants to go ride his motorcycle or something because that's what it sounds like. Where's he at? <laughs> anyway, so uh, top of the shrouds. So these are the tangs with the top of the standing rigging attached. And this is the starboard shroud. This is, of course, the forestay. And then around here is the uh, ports, uh, tang and uh, toggle. These are our connection points. I'm just checking here on everything. I've got no cracks or anything here. So everything looks pretty good. This is our jib halyard. This is a halyard that we put in it's a halyard that we put in for our code zero and then this green one here with this little toggle flappy deal that comes out at the top the head of the mast that's for our spinnaker or the potential to have a spinnaker because we don't have one of those yet um so i'm looking at the top of the sail our shackle is good we have um our seizing wire is nice and tight so everything looks really really good up here all right so up here at the top and just checking all of our connections, our wind vane, bracer, and if you can see that controls, everything's looking good. I use my phone to check the top. I just wiggled it. All right, now looking right here, this is that big wire that we put up on the there it is on the VHF. It's big. This big white one right here. And then this is our uh, wind instrument uh, information. That's right here, it runs to the top. You see that? There we go, VHF wind instrument. All right, I gotta wiggle that around, make sure it's nice and tight, and then we're gonna come right down. Almost see the ocean. I can see my shadow though. <laughs> All right, ready, babe? Bring me down, honey. What are you doing in our messy storage? Room? Well, I'm getting in my junk drawer, <laughs> which just happens to be in the same space as our depth, speed, and temperature sensor. So. I've got to pull it out, and I have not cleaned it in 
Mm. Well, I'm embarrassed to tell you how long it's been a bit. And we're, of course, going out in the big blue tomorrow, and I want to know how fast we're going. So I'm going to pull it out, put the plug in, and then once that happens, I'll be able to pull the sensor up, put it in the bucket, clean it, and then stuff it back in the ocean. You have the plug down there? Yeah. I got all kinds of goodies. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that goes in your junk drawer. Yeah, stuff I got to throw away. <laughs> I'm glad we're holding on to that. So what's funny is, is it came with a plug, but I still left the old sensor down here. So I just shoved the old sensor in the hole. Oh, hold on, let me move some of your junk from your junk drawer so I can see. Oh. Oh boy. You ready? Well, I don't know if I can see it. Three, two, one. Oh my God. So. This is why we clean it. Mmm, yummy. That is not really gonna be moving all that well. Or not at all. Mm, there's a worm. Oh my god. So, you gotta clean your paddle. Can I have a paper towel from above you? The sensor. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this one right here. Don't leave any of this in the bottom of your boat, because it will smell yummy. And make sure you rinse all the salt water out of your boat, because um, it'll also make it stink. So now, I just pick off everything I can, and I'm gonna scrub it with a, with a cleaning brush. And then I'm gonna pour. Like another paper towel. Well, yeah. You're not gonna pour water in there until you plug it back up again, are you? Correct. I brought this down to help clean. But I'll pour this water in and then I'll pour some more behind it. Just fresh water to flush down the bilge. If you want any vinegar or anything, there's some in your head. Yeah, good. Actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm gonna go shower. I'm gonna leave this in a bucket of vinegar. Because there's a couple little barnacles in there. That's it. All right, now that you've showered. Yeah. You came back in and. It's clean. It's clean. Cleaned it up. And uh, so now she spins. Oh, that's good. Super, super fly. So I'm going to swap this out really quick. <laughs> and then just dump a bunch of water in the bilge and it splashed a little more than I thought. So some of my crap got wet in here. Ah. That hit my face. <laughs> Make sure the arrow goes forward. All right. That was a little scary. Takes a lot more water than that, baby. Look at my face. You kidding the bike. <laughs> so. I'm glad you showered. Yeah. So I'm gonna pour this fresh water down in here. I'm gonna pour this vinegar on top of it, and then I'm just gonna throw another couple buckets of water. I'll leave that open overnight because we don't have gel coated bilges, so I just wanna make sure everything drains down and gets dried out before I put any equipment back in there because, of course, we don't want mildew and rust. Awesome. Check that thing off the list, and we're ready to go tomorrow. So we have a few things left to do, but we can take clean log off and we can take check fuel levels because we did both of those things tonight. So tomorrow morning we will stow all of the loose items that remain around outside. We'll check and just double check the rigging on deck. We will re-secure the bow sprit since it has been pulled up all season and we need to check 
Oh, we did that already. Check all the lights and make sure they're operational. And what is this? Oh, close all the vent in the hatches and do the trash. We're ready to go. Stella, are you ready to go? All right, so <clears throat> what's today, Kim? Like of the year, what day of the today year? Today is March 2nd, 2022. All right, so that means that <sighs> 28 days shy of a year, we bought this 50. And uh, now, thinking it would be a six month process, it's been <laughs> almost a year. And uh, we're leaving Thunderbolt for the last time in the 450 that we showed up in to start this project. Um, it's kind of an emotional deal. You know, the, the boat's already in Florida, uh, which you'll see here, or you have seen. And, um, but this is just the kind of, you know, the big kids sweeping up at the end of the day and yeah. making sure that everything is, is done. Um, we'd like to just thank everybody for all of your support. It's been overwhelming. Um, the comments, uh, all you patrons, and especially everyone that's come on and watched recently that helped boost, uh, you know, that viewer count. It really does help. Um, and boost our morale too. I mean, yeah, that's the most important thing because <laughs> as you guys have seen, we, we were in some pretty dark times. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it, they are definitely first world problems, but when you're in the thick of it, it does get- Daunting. It does get daunting. <laughs> but with your help, we made it through. Uh, and in the end, we were dauntless. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Um, we'll film along the way and show you the cool stuff. We're going to stop at some of our favorite stops up and down the coast. And hopefully we'll have a little bit of time to see some scenery. We'll see. But thanks again for everything. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the bell, subscribe, and... Uh, Give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to leave a comment. We read every single one, and I promise that we will start responding and actually engaging we'll a little bit more we're yeah, a little we less busy and stressed than we were before so but, but we read everyone and we appreciate everyone even the haters <laughs> <laughs> all right fair winds guys about an hour and a half hour and 15 minutes to get out of the river and get out into the ocean but we did it and we are officially heading south so next stop is st. Mary's that is where we plan on anchoring overnight and if we continue to make good speed which we're doing excellent right now at about eight knots we should be there right around 7 30 7 45 so 
not as late as I thought, which is also excellent news. So, good day so far, would you say? <laughs> yeah, and it's like a lake out here. I just hope we get a little bit of wind so we can pick up some speed. update on day one from Thunderbolt Marina to St. Mary's. We are about, I think, two and a half, three hours away from St. Mary's. We will be coming in in the dark, so we probably won't be doing a whole lot of filming at that point, but we had a pretty good day. Other than the wind being a little bit more than what it was predicted to be, they were saying max of like maybe eight knots and we got up to 22, I think at one point in time. So sadly it was all on the nose. So it meant that actually sailing was a little bit difficult. We did have the sails up for a short bit for, I don't know, I guess it was maybe an hour in total, but we had to pull them down because just we're sailing right into the wind and it didn't work. So uh, we're gonna close out the night and get some rest and then Tomorrow is another day. We're gonna head off to St. Augustine tomorrow. So, wish for a good anchoring and a good night's sleep. See you guys tomorrow.